Well, practice number eight and obviously the beginning of a uh, camp was uh, fast and furious and the whole goal these first eight days was to really increase our physicality, increase our toughness, our mental toughness, our intensity, attention to detail, the way we execute and get in better shape and make sure that uh, always doing our best to come out healthy on the other side and end up today with a physical scrimmage, which is what we did. And at the same time today, providing a couple extra hours where we have a, a big family barbecue. A lot of families came into town, see their boys, spend a little time with them. And before we pull them back to the dorms and get them back in bed, you know, respect and curfew and again, the culture of camp. And, um, and I think we did, I think we attacked it. I think we attacked it well. I think the level of competition in a lot of areas really, really picked, uh, picked up. And it uh, shows, it shows in the intensity behind those battles. So guys are making plays. I thought both sides of the ball made a lot of plays today. A little bit of sloppy execution in the red zone on both sides. We gave up some opportunities and also blew some opportunities on the other side. So. Uh, good learning lessons, a typical, I would say better than a typical first scrimmage because these guys have been around each other a little while, but from a cultural standpoint and understanding what we need to do to get better standpoint, certainly making uh, the right kind of progress. What do you guys have, these guys, are they all staying in the dorms during fall camp? Or do you, how do you situate that? Yeah, you have well, the you seniors know, who are doing some, are they all together? No, we're not all together in the dorm. Um, we figured we have a pretty good housing arrangement in the two places that we live. And the dorm itself, you know, we're trying to get guys out of here at a certain time so they get a, a certain amount of sleep. So we actually bed check them in their respective places. But most of them live in two or three apartment areas. So we spread out and we do it. And, you know, if you're doing it right, they're in bed by 8.30. They get out of here at about 8.15, 8.30, if not 8.45. When they pick up their snacks, they'll be home. But we check every single one of them, and they're in bed. And, uh, and they should be. You know, if you're doing practice right, they should be tired enough where they are. You're knocking on the door. Well, we tell me they're leave it open so we could come right in. If not, we're knocking. And you got about what's uh, what's the count in, uh, in wrestling when you get thrown outside the ring 10. If they don't answer by 10, it counts as you're missing. So they, uh, they do a good job. These guys are they, they respect the process, they understand. Did everybody come out healthy today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As far as we know, I don't see anything. Uh, can't recall anything that was much. I saw some some twists, you know, and maybe a couple guys that got nicked up and book got back up and ran off and got back in. So we got a full injury report tomorrow. I don't see anything of a, of a serious nature as a result of the scrimmage. Yeah, several guys limited the other day, though. So mm -hmm. boundary corner in particular was Demo ready to come back today, and David was also limited all week. David was limited all week, went full today, had a really good scrimmage. Demo we held out, and we're going to hold him out until Monday. Okay, and I gave a great opportunity to DJ James, who, who showed up big. DJ James showed up really big. I thought Nick Pickett showed up big in the secondary. Brady showed up big. Breeze in the secondary. Uh, we talked about David already. Um, Jamal was banged up last week, and we held him out. He should be back on Monday. Um, aside from that, on defense, I'm trying to think Gary. who else. Gary Baker. Yeah, Gary Baker was uh, – was held. Popo was held out for a day. He was full go today and did a nice job. Callberg got nicked up yesterday, but camp nicked up and he was good and ready to go. So I feel pretty good about where we are from a health standpoint. So we got a full day of rest tomorrow with some meetings and then be ready to hit it hard on Monday. What did you learn about your offense today? That Justin continues to get better and better. Um, had some really impressive throws and at the same time did a great job managing the protections and the runs. We dropped some balls today. We also made some monstrous plays. Johnny Johnson really played big today. Um, thought he played really well. Thought Micah Pittman played really well. Jalen Red continues to play well for us. Um, need more from the outside guys. Brian Addison had a big time catch as well. Um, those guys are really pushing each other. The competition has really helped. I'm trying to think who else. Uh, the tight ends, Jake Breland continues to have a really strong camp. Um, Kent Moore had a couple of grabs as well. The backs did a nice job today as well. The backs did a really nice job in protection, getting out, and getting the ball in their hands. So we spread the ball around pretty good. And I thought both sides, both sides kind of took turns. And we had every kind of period imaginable from, you know, going tempo, from the red zone, coming, you know how we do scrimmages, right? It's pretty extensive, huh? I know, I love it. You don't like it. Huh? <laughs> I don't say I don't like it. So. You guys <laughs> debated the, the play Addison in the bowl game, and then you talked about how he had a early good spring and then he broke his, his thumb how has he kind of progressed in this first week for you guys he, he has he's all the ability that we saw in him is really starting to show he is he's a competitor he's a very well liked guy he's a popular guy you know he's six foot in a mile right he's a tall guy he gets up there he catches the ball extremely well and he's fast you know he's a guy that can really just get up there and you know with good balance and body control could get up and snatch it away but he could also run by you and he's a real good route runner. You know, a lot of times people think that big guys are just kind of, you know, catch radius type guys. This guy can 
can actually maneuver his way into some really good route running, option routes, all that kind of stuff. So really pleased with him. What, what more are you capable in the red zone with him and Jawan this year compared to last year? I mean, a red zone package in particular, those two and a mm -hmm. McCormick or somebody is very different looking than what you had a year ago. Well, big bodies, you know, always present problems. I think we saw that a lot last year in the college football playoffs, right? I mean, big bodies kind of reign supreme during that run for those teams. And I do feel we're bigger, but I do feel that our slots are also really explosive and fast, and they have a great feel for the maneuver routes, you know, some of the stuff underneath and some of the stuff where you blow by guys as well. So, um, yeah, it does. It's, a, it's an added dimension, you know, and certainly it's something that we always explore and look at. So, But we, we do feel very comfortable with the progression of the red zone package. And, you know, again, a lot of the third down stuff, red zone stuff, you know, there's a lot of overlap there. But then again, there's not. You know, there's, there's enough things we feel with those big guys that can really help. Kayvon getting the run against the first team offensive line at all? Uh, I think he got, he might have gotten a couple snaps in there. You know, those guys, uh, they do a really good job in pass rush. You know, they really have him. Uh, I think Lamar's just having an outstanding camp. Lamar Winston continues just to bring it every single day as a leader as well, which is the most impressive part. He really, you know, him and uh, him and Jalen Red just have, they've gotten together. They've, they've made that decision that they're going to elevate the culture and that they're going to elevate their accountability and level of play. And those two guys have been outstanding. And I know they're on opposite sides of the ball, but that's okay. We encourage that. And uh, Lamar's done really, really well. All those guys, I mean, you know, Blackhawk has done a, a great Bryson Young. Sorry, Blackhawk, you know. Um, Gus, Gus has done a good job. Carl Berg, you know, Jordan continues. He, he looks like he's in, in good shape, and, and he knows that he has to continue to get to elite condition to be the best player he can possibly be. Uh, he's had a strong camp. Uh, Troy's had an excellent camp. You know, Isaac Slade had a big interception today, a real, real big one as well. I mean, he could run. He's a, he's a fast guy. He's good in coverage. He's good playing the run. He's good bringing pressure. Um, it just it, it just brings that much more intensity knowing that, you know what, there's there's guys that can play. You know, there's guys that we can kind of move around and do some things. But uh, but the other thing, guys, is we, we got a long ways to go to now. You know, I mean, we look, we're progressing. We're getting better. But the vision, the standard for this program to where we want to be, we, we have miles to go. And I was honest with them. I told them that, you know. It, uh, to go where we want to go, you know, to go from 9 and 4 and keep progressing from there, I mean, it, it's exponentially harder. The steps are, I guess the best way to put it, you, you can't get a little bit better and expect to improve when you're reaching that 9, 10 game win range. It just doesn't happen because everybody, everybody's gotten that much better. You know, it's really hard to get there. So uh, the, the commitment to that is strong. The, uh, the awareness of what needs to be done is real. And uh, we're in camp, man. We're in camp. A day, you know, come up for air tonight and tomorrow morning, and then right back in the submarine, go back down. So it sounds like Kayvon still needs a little bit of work then. Well, the, uh, well, I'm not saying the he member. I'm talking about the whole team in general. You know, Kayvon's done a great job. He's had a great camp. So, great so what camp. was your assessment of him today? Well, I'll have to watch the film. <laughs> You're on the Kayvon trip, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's what's three that? weeks. I'll watch the film. I'll talk it later. <laughs> <laughs> three weeks. Add to that. Urge. I mean, it's three weeks from today is – is the first one, does that become a bit of a milestone? Does, do these Saturdays become, hey, guys, you got to kind of realize where you're at at three weeks, two weeks, one week? Uh, that's, that's probably a pretty good explanation of it right there. I think you always do at the you, – you like to give it two or three days to really pinpoint the things that you need to get better at, that you really need to focus on without focusing on 25 things. And, I mean, we have – in our mindset, we, we have 12 – you know, playoff opportunities. Every single week is one, right? Now that's what college football has become. Any game could knock you out at any point in the season, conference, out of conference. So our guys treat it as such, but, you know, the whole focus on the opponent thing, there's still, there's urgency. There's a complete awareness. No one's denying that there's a big game, you know, coming up. But I can promise you this, that the focus and the details of what we're doing are completely on what we have to do on our techniques, our fundamentals, and our scheme. Is there carryover from our opponents in week one, probably two, and, and week four? Absolutely. With what we do already, there's definitely carryover, so we get that bonus work, but it, it really is all on, on our stuff, especially communication, you know what I mean? Communication, verbiage, all that stuff, It's uh, that's what's important right now. What's that process of watching the film? When do you like put this scrimmage to bed and stop evaluating? What's 
What's the evaluation process of a scrimmage? Well, we have that barbecue now, you know, so we'll go over there and, and chow down a little bit, and um, and we'll get on it. And a coach, if you do it the right way, when you're looking at 100 and, I don't know, 10, 120 plays, plus special teams, it should take you a good chunk of time now, you know, so hopefully some good movies late at night where you, when you take your five minute break, you can watch reruns of Gilligan's Island or you could watch something else, you know, Hogan's Heroes, I don't know. But it's gonna take you well into the night now, two or three. So when you come in in the morning um, and we go in as an offensive staff and a defensive staff, we could watch it respectively and then I'll watch it with both. And then we go through the details of how we're playing the players. You know, what depth chart and organizational chart moves we gotta make. Um, what do we feel like we do really well? Where is, um, it's almost like the old, you know, Clint Eastwood movie, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. You got to find what you're doing good, what's not so good, and what's ugly, and that's got to be put away. And, and that's an assessment that's really, really detailed. Like every single play is graded on performance, on technique, and on effort. And you're graded on the type of effort you give, too. Because there's, there's different kind of loafs, right? There's a loaf when you're just not running to the ball or finishing your block. There's also a contact loaf when you had a chance to strike somebody, but you kind of chose to, eh, you know, I didn't want to finish my run. I kind of want to save it, you know, or I didn't want to run my feet through the tackle. I just kind of want to wrap up because he was a big guy. I didn't want to take him down. Those things are assessed because those things are important. And those things are the intangibles that I'm a 100% believer will be the ultimate difference in your team's development. How often do you think you'll watch film like three or four or five different times of this one this scrimmage? Film, yeah, I'll watch it three times. three times. I'll watch it three times through. And by that, I mean when I'm watching it three times, I'm watching both sides. Yeah. So that's three times 22, that's 22 times exponential, that equals what? So eyes are shot. You know, so. <laughs> Nashro was saying the backs are light years ahead compared to last year. Where, does, where do you see that most? Other than ball security, you said up in entering today, there was only one fumble from the backs in, yeah. the, in the week. So Yeah, we caught one up today. Really upset about that. Really, really disappointed in that. And, you know, I don't. One side down to fumble, the other side yelling. Yeah, instant, uh, there's no instant replay. I'm the instant replay guy. Defensive ball. All right, that ball should never come out. Um, now that being said, those guys have really honed in on technique, on fundamentals, on eye discipline, which is such a huge part of what we do. Uh, they catch the ball a heck of a lot better out of the backfield. They make people miss. They're so much better in protection, and they got to keep improving on that. And, uh, and they're running hard. They're running. They're getting behind their pads. You know, guys like CJ, you know, Cyrus, Travis, they have low centers of gravity. I thought Sean Dollars has had a great week of practice. Very explosive, fast, can do a lot of things with the ball in his hand. So, yeah, those guys are, they're trending up, they're trending up fast. And, you know, the year of experience plus a year in the, in the weight room has certainly helped them out too. Coach, you mentioned told Sean. us the other day that uh, these scrimmages are just as important for the coaches as they are the players. Did you like what you saw out of your staff today? Yeah, I mean, we didn't have any personnel uh, substitution errors, not that I can see. When was on, on a scout team, you know, we have organizational guys having the scout team ready to be able to keep the tempo of things. I thought that slowed down a little bit. But besides that, in terms of the offense and defense organization substitutions, did not have substitution errors. Um, the formation errors took place in team starts with the threes, which we're responsible for. If you're a three, you got to get it done right. Um, there was two, there were two unforced penalties, legal procedure that we could have obviously avoided. That was, uh, that was disappointing. And then we played some pretty clean football aside from that. You know, there was a pass interference in there. Someone a really a tough contested ball. Thought it could have gone either way. Um, we're doing a better job with our hands inside. We're having referees just every single day. Just, you know, if it even looks fishy, just go ahead and flag it, flag it, flag it. It's paying off, I think. I think it's paying off. You mentioned Sean and a couple other freshmen. How do you think the newcomers handle themselves in general today? I, I think they did a great job. I do. I mean, I, I know I mentioned his name already, man, with DJ James now. You guys are playing some really good football. Mikel Wright's playing really good football. Got to mention too is Khalif now. Khalif is, I know he's, what well, hasn't been mentioned a bunch. That guy's bringing it. He's playing really good football. Mace Funa is the guy that needs to be mentioned. Mace is real. Keon. Keon is really playing good football up in there. So is Christian. Brandon. I mean, the list goes on. We mentioned Kayvon because we mentioned Kayvon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Kayvon. Um, Jonah, you know, Jonah is a really, really talented guy. You know, I wish he didn't miss those couple weeks of the summer because he has a lot to catch up on, but he's catching up fast. But Sean has done a good job. Patrick Herbert, you know, these are guys that are going to help. They're going to help. They're going to do a really good job. And Delgado, I, I want to give him some props because that guy, his ankle, he, he really twisted it pretty good early. 
He could have very easily milked that thing the whole week. That guy was out there, whether he had a limp, whether he had to hop on one leg, he just fought through and found a way to get it done. And I thought that was impressive. JR really flashed on special teams too now. Triquez, Triquez actually jumped at safety in that corner. I'll keep you guys here all night. I could go right down the list. <laughs> you know, I'm but right yeah, you got nothing to do, right? <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna write about it. So keep going, please. I just, uh, <laughs> you know, it's good. You know, I, I, pro I should probably, um, you know, of course, I like to watch the tape first. It's hard to catch all that stuff out there. But you know, you look at you look at the line of scrimmage, right? Which way is it moving? Is it going that way? Is it going this way? Right? Are there free hitters? Are there penetration? When you have protections, are guys coming free? Or are there technical issues where guys are getting beat? Then who's out competing? Who? Those are the things that I look for in something like this. And intensity. What's the juice on the sideline, right? When momentum's going one way, what's the other side doing to turn that momentum the other way? So a real hard look at, yeah, some of the tangible stuff, schematically, of course, like, you know, split rules and everything else, but then the intangibles, like who really is bringing it? At the end of the day, you, you have to, right? It's, it's how you play the game. And you got to show every time you play it how much it means to you, so. Was a couple more. mixed or was somebody down it was it down was there. it was mixed and and you that you love you're very concerned if it's lopsided i mean that is like i've been on a couple teams that had that and it was especially when i was a graduate assistant and part of a rebuilding program and i remember i didn't know any better i just walked in the locker room and it was it was like a morgan there you know it was like oh man you know mm -hmm. we're gonna have a tough time holding up on this side or that side so when you see that back and forth it gets you excited, um, and guys get amped up pretty good because they know they got to wait another day until they get back at it again. So, a lot of pride, a lot of pride being demonstrated. You mentioned said, having 85 scholarship players being a, a helpful. Can you see that on the scrimmage? That is something that is so. It's a blessing. It's it's something that was sorely missed a year ago. Think about that. You know, almost a dozen players less. You know, think about the quality of work of your twos and threes not to mention what that does for your look teams what that does for your ones knowing that there's that type of quality depth behind them Th those numbers it's a game changer and i cannot stress that where does it help the most you think where does it help where, the most yeah like where's the, the depth? i think you see it across the board you know you see a couple in the front you see a couple on the edges certainly see you know at the skilled positions the defensive backs and the wide receivers that's you know, you run out of legs, man. You know, camp is, you see those GPS numbers there for real. I mean, we're running, we're running a lot of high speed yards, a lot of mileage on those guys, and we've got to take care of them. We can't, can't overrun it, but at the same time, you can't give in to the mentality that, oh, it's, you know, that it's, it's too much. We're going to push them right to the edge, and then we're going to have a breakthrough. We're not going to have something that breaks down, but we, we got to take them to the edge. That's where that, that big old sports science center behind you helps out. I think it's really, really useful. You'd said in LA that it was 15% left to install defensively. I know the first week, since it's not in full pads until the later half, it usually yeah. doesn't come the first week. So is Andy doing the dime and those other packages, those exotics mm -hmm. more this week coming up? Yeah, we did some. You know, we should, we did some today, as a matter of fact. And they're, it's tough stuff now. You know, all those things that challenge your protections, all of them too, your five, six man, seven protections, your disguise looks, you know, um, you name it. I mean, it was thrown. It was thrown today, and I, and I think it's just about fully installed. And the good part about that is you have three more weeks to rep it, you know, before you start the season. So I know that that uh, Andy and all those guys feel real good about where they are in terms of it from an install standpoint.